screen. <laughs> Good morning, Balticon, and welcome to our panel on beta reading propositions. My name is Keith Hughes. I am your moderator for this session. I am a science fiction writer of time travel stories. This is the second one in my series, Time Hunt. Um, so that's what I do as a writer, and writers need beta, rush, beta readers. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm just going to kind of go through the group here and ask them to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about them. Uh, let's start with you, Morgan. Hi, um, I'm Morgan Hazelwood. I'm a blogger, a vlogger, and a querying writer, and I run some Facebook groups, and we do a lot of beta reading. Okay, how about you, Ted? Hi, I'm uh, Ted Weber. I'm a speculative fiction author and ecologist. The first two books of my Near Future Cyberpunk trilogy, Sleep State Interrupt and Wrath of Leviathan, or you can find on online. And the finale of the trilogy will be released September 1st. Okay. Starla, you want to tell us about yourself? Hi, I am Starla Hutchton. Um, I have been an author for the last uh, just over a decade. Got about 25 books out there across all various genres. Um, I am also a freelance book cover designer. If you saw Keith's cover just now, that's one of mine. Um, yes, <laughs> uh, I am also an audiobook narrator, so I wear all the hats and uh, being that I have been, you know, doing this writing thing for over a decade, um, I have done a lot of beta and alpha reading and stuff for other people. <laughs> and my okay. hair is blue, Mike. yes. <laughs> and your hair is blue, yes. Mike, go ahead. Well, I'm Mike Luoma. I'm a science fiction writer, a podcaster, a radio guy, and I've been writing for, God, too long. And I just finished writing my new novel, or my new novel that just came out, The Star Seeds of Earth, which I just had uh, some beta readers on back in January in the first couple months of this year, of whom our moderator, Keith, is one of those. But uh, you can find all my stuff at glowinthedarkradio.com. Okay, great. So uh, I th there's, there's a couple terms to get thrown around as far as getting people to read your book prior to publication to give you feedback. We've got beta readers and we've got alpha readers. So we probably ought to define those terms a little bit so people know exactly what it is we're talking about. Um, uh, Starla, I think you've used or done both. Do you want to give us a, a, a brief uh, definition of those two terms? <laughs> um, the alpha reader is the per first person that sees um, any of your work. Um, I have utilized alpha readers like i've got uh, somebody that's currently waiting for me to finish some stuff <laughs> but uh uh so yeah i've i've got somebody that uh that i work with um that that she reads as i go along so that'd be an alpha reader beta reader is somebody that uh gives you feedback on a not quite finished product <laughs> uh sometimes it's gone to an editor i've done beta reader uh had used beta readers it's early <laughs> i've used beta readers after my editor has seen it and um just to get general feedback um but also before so okay great uh, by the way i forgot to mention uh I'm not, we're not really paying attention to the chat usually there's too much detail there uh for us to really be following while we're talking but if you have a question for us please use the q a feature and uh, we'll try to merge them into the conversation if they're relevant to what we're, we're talking about at the time. Otherwise, we'll, we'll, we'll try to have some time at the end to go through them. Uh, so um, in order to have beta readers, you have to find beta readers. You have to find people that are willing to take some time to you know, read the book and, and, and let you know what they think. Um, Ted, how do you go about doing that? Um, usually, uh, I look for other writers. Um, so I'm in the uh, critique circle uh, at the Baltimore Science Fiction Society. They meet twice a month at um, the business uh, complex in uh, Baltimore. And I'm also in a, I run a, a workshop in Annapolis. So I don't normally, um, I don't have alpha readers per se. Uh, because I don't want anyone to see it at, at that stage. Uh, but I do, um, at these critique uh, circles, it's usually limited to um, like uh, 10 pages. So that's good for um, in-depth looking at, uh, you know, a piece at a time 
and that can be in any stage. So for actual beta readers, um, I look for um, other writers, usually through the Maryland Writers Association or um, BISFIS. And because there are other writers, they know what to look for. And I also give them um, a list of things that I, I'm looking for so that to give them some guidance. Okay. How about you, Morgan? What do you do to find beta readers? So um, I'm, I'm in a lot of uh, online writing groups. Um, I, so um, sometimes you call when you have a fellow writer critiquing your stuff, a critique partner rather than a beta reader, um, with beta readers being, you know, readers and fans, because they have a slightly different um, perspective. And so they're going to give different types of feedback. But a critique partner is clearly one type of beta reader. For me, I, I have an identical twin and she is my alpha reader because it's like me reading it only without having written it. So there's a lot, not that we're the same person, but we have the same background and the same context. And so she can tell if it says what it was intended to say. And then I have to get somebody else to read it to make sure that the rest of the world can understand that as well. Um, but nobody, nobody ever sees draft zero. I polish it, make sure it's coherent, and then send it out. Um, so I, I think my, my next answer is another question of yours. Um, I, I definitely okay. do send out um, a questionnaire. If you Google 10 questions asked your QA readers, I think right now I'm the featured snippet. Um, so I, I just want to make sure that my readers are focusing on what the, the sort of feedback I'm looking for. Okay. How about you, Mike? What do you do to gather a, a set of beta readers? I cast a pretty wide net. I like to try to get a lot of different people. So I'll start with my uh, patrons on Patreon and say, hey, does anybody want a beta read? And then I, I'll, you know, approach different groups I'm in on Facebook, whether it's um, comic writers or uh, comic book writers, because I also do that, or, or novelists, other writers I know, um, even, you know, friends that are here in, in the, the, the Balto, Balticon community. So, but also in, in Burlington, where I live, I'm in Burlington, Vermont, there's a huge writers community and I've known a lot of writers for many years. So there's a lot of people I just know personally that I can kind of, you know, get them to, to, to read the book for me. And then there are people, because I've been doing this for a while and this is my seventh novel, there are people that have been beta reading for me all along. So I go back to them as well. Okay, great. How about you, Starla? What do you do? Anything different? Um, well, it really depends. I write in a lot of different genres. Like I've got, <laughs> I've got contemporary romance. I've got high fantasy. I've got steampunk. I've got all kinds of stuff. So trying to find a beta reader, like I have to look for one, people that are interested in whatever genre it is I'm working on. Um, and two, I want to know... Like it really depends on what I'm looking for. If if I'm, especially when I'm working in a relatively new genre for me, I want to make sure I'm doing it right. So I look for readers um, that I know are well read or um, right in that genre, um, because they're going to be giving me the most accurate feedback, um, especially for, you know, if if it's something like new to me, like I started something uh, new and I had people read it over that it that um, had a wide berth of experience um, in this particular genre so I look for okay. people that I can trust and that I know that their writing is solid so that they're going to be giving me um, good advice all right great I, I do something kind of like what what Mike does and, and that I have a, a newsletter uh, uh, that I send out so I, I have opened that up to my subscribers of that and saying, hey, if you want to be, if you want to you know, be a beta reader, let me know. And so I've got some people that way. Uh, I, I know Nathan Lowell's done that as well, only he's gotten so many people that, that he's kind of got to pick and choose out of the people that have raised their hand and said, hey, I want a beta read. Uh, which brings me to my next question, you know, you got to manage the feedback coming back in when you, when you task people with reading your book. Now, obviously, not not necessarily everybody is going to raise their hand and say, "Hey, I want to beta read this book," or actually going to get around to do it. But um, 
you, there's also a need to control how much feedback is coming back to you. So how much is too much and what do you do to manage the process? Mike, why don't we start with you this time? You're muted. Sorry about that. There you go. Um, I, like to, uh, I like to set a deadline so that it's, it's usually a deadline that isn't um, hard and fast, but I think that people, when they have a deadline, work towards it a little bit better. So I try to do that. And if you set like a 30 day deadline, it kind of limits the amount of, of feedback you're going to get anyway, because people get an appreciation for the depth that you're looking for. But I also think that you set that out at the beginning. I mean, um, when I sent out my draft for my beta readers, it, it explained, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I hope you'll take back from it. And please don't be afraid to savage, you know, savagely rip it apart. This is not a, a you know, complete work. And I kind of go through that and, um, and I just lay it out because I think communication is important. If you put out there what you want to get, then people have an appreciation for it. You give it a time frame, it lets them know what, what you know, kind of the scope and scale is. Okay. Carla, how about you? How do you control how many beta readers and, and, and what they're going to give you back? Well, I'm really picky about uh, who I let see my work before I, you know, put it out there. Um, so when, when, I, when I use beta readers, I don't generally do a, like, I don't do like a hundred of them, <laughs> like some people. Um, so what I like to do, what I've started doing recently, um, I have a Google Doc um, with the project. Uh, and so that people can leave comments on, you know, if they catch an error or they have a question, you know, plot wise or, or um, you know, character information, or if something conflicts, like, you know, in chapter three, you said he was 45, but, you know, in, in chapter 10, you, you, you changed that and it was like 40, or 35, whatever. Um, so, yeah, just a, a Google Docs are really, and, and, a, and a Microsoft word doc has like that same like commenting feature um i have to you have to make sure that uh they don't have access to like actually edit the document though <laughs> so it's it's commenting only but it's a good way to um track feedback that way and then uh, sometimes i have found um, my beta readers will actually start arguing between you know two of them so there'll be like a whole conversation thread <laughs> about a certain you know point you know in the in the plot that um whether it made sense or if they liked it or what one of them will be defending it and one of them will be you know it's like no no i don't like that but um yeah so that's a good way to track the information that comes in okay how about you ted what do you uh what do you consider the prime number of beta readers and what do you do to kind of herd those cats um so uh i guess uh, like mike mentioned you know want to set a, a deadline for feedback uh, otherwise and then a gentle nudge after uh, a month or so um, so I'm seeking both feedback from writers and then also a different set of beta readers are um, fact checkers so for example so um, my cyberpunk books you know I was getting feedback uh, from a lot of people in the um, cybersecurity industry. And then I also have a book, the second book of the trilogy uh, is very heavy on um, federal, the federal legal system. So I got feedback, and I'm not a lawyer, though I work with lawyers. Um, so I solicited a lot of feedback from uh, defense attorneys and prosecutors and, and then spent some time in the Maryland Law Library. And then, um, uh, another thing um, I look for, is, and then these these feedbacks are usually staggered because they're at different points and different drafts. So I haven't really had a problem with too much coming in at, at one time, although um, it's sometimes for critique groups where there's a bunch of people, it could take me a couple of months to actually <laughs> to pour through them. Um, and the other thing is I seek a diversity of beta readers. I don't want all white men because uh, that is a, um, a narrow um, view of uh, the world. So I want to see what people from different um, backgrounds and um, different points of view 
have. And then I, I give them a uh, list of specific things, which I don't know, maybe we can go into on a later question, um, you know, what we're looking for. So um, I guess the only time I have reconciliation problems is uh, yeah, usually from critique groups and then especially when they all have completely different advice, which happens more often than I would like. And they're completely in conflicting advice and then you have to decide what to do. It's one thing okay. if it's a consensus, but if it's all conflicting, it's difficult. Yeah. How about you, Morgan? Um, I, I'm going to start off backwards by uh, addressing what Ted just ended up with, which is when I get conflicting advice, that means that part of my story has a problem. Their advice is whatever, their opinion. But I look at that part and see what is good for my story and what makes it most true. But um, going back to the actual question, uh, for, for my beta reading process, I like to use Google Docs. Um, I can access it on my phone totally not at work um, and on my home computer pretty easily. Um, and I, I like to isolate my readers. I don't like them to see what the others are saying because sure, sometimes you can get lots of lively discussion, but sometimes a very opinionated person will sway everybody else. And I, I want to make sure that I'm getting fresh views. So I send everybody their own copy. And I mean, I've, I've had no problems with saving it as a Word document and sending it to somebody on Linux and getting it in comment form on the sidebar. <clears throat> and so when I go through all this beta feedback, I'm going through each of it separately. And I, I know everybody says ignore the line edits, focus on the other stuff, but I can't, I can't see the forest for the tree. So I got to clean up the lines so I can see what the big picture advice that they're giving is. Um, so, so, so that's basically my process. I usually like less than 10 people. Um, I, and uh, as, as Ted said, I do like a diversity of people. I like people with different backgrounds, like a teacher and a scientist and a um, different age ranges and different, you know, backgrounds and everything like that, because I do want a good diverse um, set of, I, I don't want people coming from the same direction. I get enough of that from my alpha reader, so. Can I ask a quick okay. technical question of Morgan? Um, so you mentioned that you use Google Docs, which is a, a great idea. Um, what would be cool, and I don't know if this is possible, is if you could send, um, if, if the readers could all edit it independently, but it was all in the same document that you saw. Do you know if that's possible? Unfortunately, um, I haven't found a way for that. I, I think I just need to have separate copies for each of them. And then I spread them all out and I read through them at the same time. And it gets, yeah, it gets messy. That's actually a really good idea. <clears throat> and I can definitely see the, uh, the benefit of doing that. And now I wonder if like software like that exists because <laughs> that, that might actually be really useful. <laughs> right. I, I would yeah, love mine. that because it's a little tedious to have to have it in so many separate places. Yeah, I end up putting one, one it on a tablet so I can read it. And <laughs> yeah. One technique I do is, is, is if uh, I get comments from people like, this doesn't make sense or this seems out of, you know, doing time travel novels, you know, continuity is, is the biggest problem because there's always, I'm jumping from here to there or my characters are jumping from here to there and, you know, did I put that rock in that place or was it someplace else or, or whatever? And so one thing I've found that's helpful is, is I'll go through, and I usually send out Word docs. I haven't got into using Google Docs for this. But I'll take those comments and I'll do a spreadsheet. And I'll say, okay, here's the beta reader's name. Uh, here's the chapter maybe, um, chapter page number. Somebody tell me where in the book it's at. And then I'll just copy and paste their, their comment in there. And then I can go through that and that gives me kind of a big picture view so I can see if I've got the same comment from two, from multiple people on the same place, or like you were saying, Morgan, conflicting comments from the same place. And then I'll kind of use that as my master tick sheet for when I want to go through the book and, um, and, and, and fix, fix, fix what I feel needs fixing. Um, so let's talk about what we feel is the ideal type of feedback. What is it we're looking to get from them? Um, 
Uh, it's not typically line edits. It's not typically uh, you know typos that we're looking for because typically we haven't sent this work to to um, an editor yet. Uh, so Starla, um, what what kind of feedback are you looking for when you send your work out to beta readers? Um, well, it really varies. Actually, usually I will say I will take everything that you can give me. <laughs> so that does include typos. If they find them, point them out. Like, uh, sure. yeah, like because I know I personally struggle uh, to get past those as I'm reading something. Um, so if and and I know some people just can't like it just sticks out and it glares at them. So make note of it. But uh, yet, um, I always make sure if I'm beta or alpha reading for somebody that I ask specifically what they're looking for, because I will give them everything <laughs> if that's what they want. But if all they're looking for is general feedback on, do you like this? Did you, uh, are there any things that you took issue with? Um, <clears throat> did you feel the continuity, you know, flowed? Um, did you did you have any major like were there was was there anything that you know you found triggering or problematic? Um, so it, yeah, I guess it it really varies a lot. Like I've done both like very general read throughs just to you know get get some how did you feel about this feedback? And then I've also done stuff where they're like, give me everything you know any single problem that you had. Um, with this work, let me know. So yeah, it's it's really important that you outline that to the people that you're sending out to um, and asking very specifically um, for stuff that you're looking for and be prepared. Okay. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Morgan? Um, as I said, I have a questionnaire that I send out with like 10 questions and a couple bonus ones about pacing and plotting and description and when did you get bored and want to set down the book just so I can make sure that, you know, everything is, is good. Um, I've, I've had two people ever actually answer the questionnaire, but it puts in their head what to look for. Um, when, when I do beta reading myself, I will specifically ask, do you mind if I let line edit because I have trouble not, um, just like Starla said. Um, and, and I will not if they ask me not to, but I, I like to, I like to mix in with the feedback of instead of just saying everything that I see that's wrong or questionable, I like to also say, hey, I loved this line, great description, and try to let them know what is working so they can um, extend that to the rest of their manuscript. Yeah, I'll do that too. Like if somebody's got a really great line, a really great descriptive thing, I'll usually, I don't do a lot of line editing because I hate editing, editing period. But if, if somebody's got a great line, I'll, I'll, I'll point that out. How about oh, you, Mike? Yeah. Definitely. If oh. like something makes me laugh out loud, definitely. I make yeah. note of that. Yeah. I, yeah. I have to ask them in advance if there are Oxford comma people. I, I oh. will. <laughs> I will read people who don't do Oxford comma and not add the comma, but it hurts. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Well, I, um, I find that different beta readers bring different strengths. So um, uh, as you begin to work with new ones, you begin to see what their strengths are. And as you've worked with other ones over the years, you get different feedback from different people. So I think I like to just let people go. I, I do set out like things I say, you know, look for repeated words, look for, um, you know, uh, conflicts and continuity errors. And of course, the things that we've talked about. But uh, I also like to just see what, what comes back. Uh, you do have to give some focus, of course, because otherwise people are a little bit lost and they're like, I'm not sure what I should tell you. Um, but you, I do like to kind of let people play to their strengths. And, and some people will like line at it and some people will catch grammatical errors and some people will catch, you know, continuity things and other people will tell you, dude, what's with the security of this place? You get everybody coming in here. And um, so, you know, that, that was a Keith thing on my. Uh, latest yeah, it was. I recognize that comment. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it, and, and in all fairness, Keith's beta reading was very helpful to me because he caught some things that I didn't and helped me to, um, I found Keith's, strengths were, were more in the, the, the big picture kind of thing. You know, this is working, this isn't. But um, I've got another friend, Nate, 
who, if I'm doing stuff grammatically that isn't working or is, you know, like grammatically incorrect, he's like, you're driving me nuts. So it's, it's good to have different people who have different strengths, I think, and to allow them to play to those strengths. Okay, great. How about you, Ted? What are you looking for? Um, so I also uh, include a questionnaire um, when I ask for feedback. Um, again, uh, if it's a technical reader, I'm looking for specific feedback on accuracy, um, you know, whether it be IT or cybersecurity related or, um, or law related. And also my um, book, Wrath of Leviathan, was mostly set in Sao Paulo. And so I sent it to Brazilian friends and then also some people in Sao Paulo to make sure I was using the language and idioms correctly because um, my Portuguese is not so good. Um, and um, also about the distinct culture of Sao Paulo. Every region uh, has a distinct culture. Sao Paulo is uh, quite a bit different from Rio in a lot of ways. Um, so the type of things I'm looking for, um, yeah, depend on the book, but uh, generally uh, it includes things about, you know, I ask, are there any major structural or overall problems with the book? Uh, where does the story bog down? Do the characters seem real and compelling? Do the characters change in a um, satisfying and realistic manner? Uh, do you feel like you're really in the setting? Um, is the plot compelling? How can the plot be improved? Are there any inconsistencies or impossibilities? And then also um, anything else they notice or want to say. So oftentimes um, beta readers will um, will do some line edits even though I ask them, uh, say that I don't want them to do that. Um, but uh, if they do, great, that's awesome. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, one of the things I wanted to, to point out a little bit, I think Somebody, maybe Starla mentioned it about, about triggering things, but anything that's coming out of beta reading comment that um, might be some sort of a sensitivity issue or something, even if you don't think that your work is necessarily something where you would, you would, you would have thought you would have needed some sort of sensitivity reader, if you're getting comments back from beta readers that, hey, this might be an issue with that, then you may want to look at that a little deeper and maybe think about doing that. Um, the other thing, anytime you're giving somebody feedback, it's like giving somebody advice. They can take it or they cannot. And the one thing as a beta reader, to, it's good to remember, is that the author is not obligated to, uh, to take your feedback. Um, yeah, I've beta read for people in the past where uh, I say, you know, I don't like this. I think this is a problem. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I might have been the only one and they didn't change it for that. And that's fine. Um, because you know I, it's not my book, but uh, you know that's just something that's just something to remember. I've heard a couple of people mention due dates. Um, I also like to give something of a due date. So so what do we consider too long and too short? I just, one of my favorite authors has beta readers, and he's pretty open about who can be a beta reader. Uh, but he usually gives three days to read his books. They're usually over 100k in length. Yeah. And uh, I, I found that too short, so I kind of bowed out. So what do you feel is is a good a good amount of time to give somebody to beta read your book. Um, let's start with you, Ted. Um, well, unfortunately, a lot of that is driven by uh, outside forces like um, uh, publisher demands and things like that. So there have to be deadlines. Um, so, but I usually give at least two weeks and usually not more than a month. And then I'll do a gentle reminder somewhere um, toward the end of that and then expect then. So that's the official deadline I give and then I'll extend it up to a couple of weeks. And then after that, I'll just give up on them. But it's an, it depends on where it fits in the schedule, but I, um, it's unrealistic to expect someone to read a manuscript in less than two weeks, and really a month is, is fair, I think. Okay. How about you, Morgan? Um, what, what Ted said, I, I definitely think, you know, I usually give them maybe six weeks, um, partially because I think whatever I'm working on when I send it out will only take me a month because I'm delusional. Um, but uh, I, I'll, I'll give them up to about two months and then I'll be like, hey, Thanks for trying. I realize life got in the way. I'm moving on. 
But when, when I do beta reading for other people, um, it might take me a while to get to it. But once I sit down, I usually blow through it in a day or two because I, I just, I'm focused on it. I don't want to lose my place. I don't want to, and, and pacing is something I worry about for my stuff. So I want to make sure that I'm paying attention. And when you read it a chapter at a time, that can really be a struggle. Um, I just wanted to throw in one thing uh, I didn't mention earlier is that when I'm looking for beta readers, very often I will give them the first chapter and see if their type of feedback meshes with me and if that's the sort of stuff I'm looking for before committing to giving them my entire baby. So I just wanted to, to throw that out there. Okay, how about you, Mike? Like I was saying, I, I like a 30 day deadline, um, but I also, I don't stick hard and fast with that. I'll give them some wiggle room if they can't get it back in and, and up to two months. But after that, you, you just know that they're not going to finish. So, Yeah. I do know with your book, uh, uh, you had sent it to me and then I promptly forgot about it. And then you pinged me like a couple weeks later and I was like, oh crap, I got to get to that. So, <laughs> and then I kind of did like Morgan did. I got a lot of my Kindle and I read it in a, in a couple of days. How I about think, you, Starla? I think having that. Oh, I'm that, sorry. Go ahead, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I think having that time frame allows people to do that because I think a lot of people approach it in that kind of a spurt, but they just don't have the time in that kind of a time frame all the time so that you know you give them right. a, a, a month and hopefully they can manage that okay how about you starla well um, a month is is pretty good um i think more than that and i would be like i don't really think they want to do this and and i would move on um almost definitely um for me though like it really varies based on the project because like some of the stuff i'm just I don't have any like set timeline for when I'm going to release it. And there have been cases where I've had a project and I'm like, I just don't even know if I'm going to put this out there. Uh, just, um, you know, for whatever reason. Um, so I always know that I've, I've hit the right notes though, when I have somebody who they start reading it after like a day or two and like, they're finished in 24 hours <laughs> like that that that's how you know like you've just really nailed it because they could not put it down um and I've, I've had that happen once or twice which was awesome um but yeah with i'm i'm like morgan too when i sit down like if i commit to it um yeah and if if i say that i'm gonna beta read for you i try to get to it within the week um and if something happens then i feel terrible but then yeah that that's what i do and i um usually fly through it within a day or two i think at the most three but usually about two days and i'm done okay so we do have some questions from our our audience here so and if you have any more questions uh feel free to put them in um and we've got quite a few so we'll start working through these so pat french uh asks if you already have a professional editor, what is the role of a beta reader? And rather than going around the team, uh, it, I'll, I'll just let you guys volunteer if you, you know, uh, and, and answer this one if you if you uh, if you want to. So so uh, whoever wants to take that one, go ahead. Um, maybe I'll, I'll jump in and just say uh, if you have a professional editor, um, and um, I do for my. Um, the published works it's through the publisher that's at a late stage in the game and um, it needs to be in as good a shape as possible before it gets there so the beta readers um, really should come before the professional editor that should be a last because that um, and then if you're paying for an editor you don't want to um, have them bogged down on things that other people could point out so I I think that they are both needed, and I think that the uh, beta readers come before the professional editor, but other people may have uh, different opinions. Okay, anybody else have yeah, any I've, I've done both. I've done both. Like I, I was pretty sure like the book was done, my editor had seen it, but I just wanted to get some general reader feedback. Um, or you know to build some buzz so um yeah like a, almost like an advanced uh, reader copy type of thing um 
so yeah I, which is technically not a beta reader but <laughs> uh, people will still feel invested in it um, as well then so okay I, I think the thing I would add on there is especially if you're an indie and so you're you're hiring an editor to look at your work there's lots of different type of editors you got line editors you got proofing editors there's a couple other ones and and so depending upon which type you're using you know when i get my books professionally edited i'm not necessarily probably having all the editors touch it that like simon and schuster is uh just because i can't afford to have have you know all, all that vast array of editors touch it so i i've got i've got a small set so um the type of editor you're using may not fulfill that role a proofreader is not going to be telling you if you've got plot holes for example the other thing i'd mention is like if i'm re beta reading a book I don't do a line edit, but if I come across a sentence that's really broken and I've got to read it three or four times to really even even try to, to, to get a little bit of meaning out of it, I might put a note on there that says, you need to fix this, this is broken. Um, but I'm not doing a detailed line edit. So if they took my manuscript and said, okay, great, it's been edited, that you'd, be you'd be in big trouble. Okay, um, our next one. How can you tell a new beta reader knows what he or she is doing? I think we've heard a little bit about that with questionnaires and, and, and tapping other writers, but does anybody have anything else they want to want to share on that? Yeah. Um, yeah, it really just depends on what you're looking for because um, even a new beta reader can give you valuable feedback um, de depending on, you know, the goal. That's where the whole have them read a chapter first and see if you find that use that feedback useful if it resonates with you for your story and if it's obvious they don't know what they're doing then um, you thank them and don't incorporate it right okay that's right don't um, argue with beta readers just thank yeah. them and move on yeah that's yeah. a good point just um, say yeah. thank you there is one thing that I'd, I'd like to throw in that we haven't covered, and that's how we give um, feedback. And um, one thing that I wanted to uh, bring up was that um, I always like to start with the positive. And this is something I learned from um, uh, Sherry Woosley in our uh, business writing group. Um, and then uh, go into the um, critical aspects and then end with a positive note. I think somebody here on the panel referred to it as a shit sandwich, but uh, compliment <laughs> sandwich. It's a compliment sandwich. <laughs> yeah. it's supposed to keep it PG. <laughs> it's right. people, I'm sorry. Um, well, we get we get one. I guess that's it, maybe. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, yeah. Try to keep the positive, and then in the negative part, don't be negative. Just just say, well, this isn't working. This is working, or this isn't working. You're not there to tell the writer how to write their story. You're not there to say, well, you should uh, have vampires in it or something like that. Um, <laughs> you should just say, you know, what's working and what isn't. And maybe um, you ought to think about this. Maybe there's a plot hole here or something like that. Or this character is not uh, coming across as like that. Something like that. So. I once got a 3,000 word feedback not even counting the line edit comments from a beta reader where the first wow. third was just kind of general stuff and the last third was how they would have built my world differently oh no so <laughs> that pointed out <laughs> that there was some technological things that maybe i should have incorporated in my story and it was useful but i definitely didn't incorporate it the way they intended because their vision was very different i i usually say when i get feedback like that one third is spot on one third is what are you talking about but maybe i didn't set it up right and one third is i thought i fixed that but i guess i just kind of slapped a coat of paint and hoped for the best uh also i would note that uh when i'm looking at the the feedback that i get if all I'm seeing is like, oh, I love this and this is great. And like, I don't see anything critical at all. I tend to throw out all of those comments completely because then it doesn't feel objective at all to me. Like I'm, I'm not, when I'm soliciting feedback, I'm not necessarily looking for, you know, 
a pat on the back. <laughs> it's like, I want to know how to make everything better and take it to the next level. That is absolutely what I'm looking for uh, when, I'm, when I'm getting beta reader feedback. Um, so yeah, if I don't see anything critical at all, then I don't put a lot of weight on that person's opinion because then I feel like they're just, you know, blowing smoke. So. Yeah, we want them to fanboy on our reviews on Amazon, not yes. on the beta right. reader. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, think, I think that even non-technical people, though, can give you insight. You know, people who, who, who can't tell you exactly what's wrong can tell you that something's wrong with your manuscript. Yes. So it doesn't have to be somebody that can, you know, hone in on things. Your feedback is going to vary from your different beta readers. So, yes. yeah, I mean, what people have to say is valuable even if they don't know exactly how to put it. Yeah. Uh, when it, when y'all mention reviews and stuff, uh, sometimes I have friends and family who are really excited and they all want to review my stuff, or at least the first couple, I don't know after that. But I wanted to be really selective about how many of my friends and family read it because I want people who are still excited about it to read it for the first time when it's published without being, oh, look, she fixed this, or wait, she left that in? And I want them to experience the polished thing without comparing it to the earlier drafts. So sometimes if I, don't, don't be hurt if I say, please don't. Um, it's because I, want, I, I think you'll really enjoy the final thing, so. Another thing I say is, this is just my opinion, um, and it's, you know, subjective. There, there's a really okay, good yeah. question in the Q&A there um, from Benson Daniel. So like that one seems, because I know we're starting to get down to the end, but like that one, yeah. that one's important. Uh, <laughs> Maybe uh, okay, not the target let's... audience? Sorry. Yeah, so, so the question is, what do you do when you really don't like the story you're beta reading? I actually had that happen. I, I... <laughs> so, <Is it? laughs> yeah. To, um, to a story of yours or one that you were beta reading no, for somebody else? that I was beta reading for someone else. Um, they, the, the premise sounded great and they were super excited and I was super excited to get to the story and I started reading it and there was, it was not for me. Um, <laughs> so in, in that case, I think I maybe could have handled it better because basically I just kind of ghosted because I really hate confrontation. Um, but I probably should have been honest and been more like, wasn't really my thing. Um, you know, it's, it's not that, you know, the writing was bad or anything. It's just some, something about it was just not a good fit for me. Um, so that's probably what I would recommend. Um, if you don't like the story that, uh, you know, be, be, try to be kind about it and and don't like i mean unless this is something like super super problematic then maybe point that out um but be aware that it could just be your own personal tastes that are interfering in the process so um if that's the case i would definitely um be honest with the person that um yeah, and, and don't do like I did and just vanish. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Don't do that. <laughs> was it the type of story, Starla, that, or was it something offensive in the story? Um, it, it wasn't something offensive. It was, it, was a, it was really kind of a personal taste thing. Um, and I don't like bringing up the issue that I had like it, there wouldn't have been a book. So <laughs> like, it's not, um, it, it was definitely a personal taste thing. So it wasn't, it, it wasn't something, you know, on the, on their part that, you know, was, yeah. <laughs> I think it's so maybe, a, maybe the best feedback to the writer out of that was, uh, you know, Hey, you know, you really, your, your, your blurb for this book really should reflect yeah. The end product uh, a little bit better. Yeah, in, in my case it was like, um, I think this is more suited to like a middle aged white man than me. So like I was not <laughs> I, I was not well equipped to uh to to deliver that particular bit of news. So um <laughs> yeah, it was just it was strictly about the character that was telling the story that I had the problem with. And like I said, it was personal taste. So 
I, I haven't really had that happen because um, usually I'm doing um, exchanges with people I know um, or uh, it's through the Maryland Writers Association it has a uh, sort of writers exchange or and also like a critique and beta readers groups. Uh, so there they have to um, describe what it is and give like the first chapter or so and you read the first chapter and you say, you know, if you, if you think it's a good fit, then, you know, you can say yes, but if it isn't, then you'll just give it a pass. And I, I think that that's a good um, idea is to just ask for the first chapter and then that way you don't have to read something that is just um, not a good fit. Did you have something to say on this one, um, Mark? Mike? Yeah, I was just um, I was just thinking you, you just got to be honest. I'd rather hear honestly back from somebody if something doesn't work for them or if they're not into it, you know, and if I'm reading something that doesn't work for me, I'm going to tell somebody that's like, look, the, the feedback I'm going to give you won't be valuable because I'm not getting into this. And it's not you, it's me, which, you know, doesn't always go over well, but I think you have to be honest, you know. Yeah, I would yeah. also point yeah. out that my particular case was like years ago, and um, I'm definitely more confident in my own, you know, opinions about writing and, and stories and things now than I was then. So <laughs> I would, yeah, I would definitely handle it differently, <laughs> yeah. which is why I, I give that advice. <laughs> I've definitely helped friends word carefully a, thank you for letting me read this. Um, it's not to my taste. You might have trouble with the market because these few things are problematic. Um, but best of luck. I'm sorry, I'm not a good fit for reading this for you. Step away. Um, but okay. but I haven't actually had too too much for my own stuff. Okay. Well, we just got we got about two minutes left, so I'd like to to go around the group again and ask you to uh, share your social media handles and uh, websites and all of those kind of things. So uh, let's start with you, Mike. All right. I send people to MikeLuoma.com or GlowInTheDarkRadio.com. And I've just put out my new book, The Star Seeds of Earth, just came out on Friday. And you can find out all about that book and about comics and all the other stuff I do. And my social media links are there as well. Again, it's MikeLuoma.com or GlowInTheDarkRadio.com. Thanks, you guys. Okay, go ahead. Um, first two books of my Near Future Cyberpunk trilogy, uh, Sleepscape Interrupt and... Um, so Wrath of Leviathan are available on online outlets. Um, since you can only buy books online right now during the coronavirus, <laughs> um, the finale will be released September 1st. Uh, you can find book links, uh, short stories, and more stuff at my website, tcweber.com. Um, you can find me on Discord too, and my social media links you can find at the website, and I will post that in chat. Okay. Uh, Starla, go ahead. You can find all of my stuff at StarlaHutchton.com, and that includes a link to my design website, which is designedbystarla.com. Uh, it includes links to all my social media stuff, which is I have a Facebook author page. I have a Facebook uh, cover design page. Uh, you can find me at Starla Hutchton on Instagram and Twitter. Um, yeah, I think I think that's it. Like, I I, I just put all of my books um, exclusive. They moved back to Amazon, so they are in uh, Kindle Unlimited now. Um, you can find my the audiobooks and things that I've narrated for different people and um, of my own. You can find them on Audible, on iTunes. I have some podcast stuff out there, but links to everything. Um, if you wanna, if you're interested in any of that stuff, it's all at StarlaHutchton.com. Okay, Morgan. Hi, I'm Morgan Hazelwood. Oh wait, we're at the outro. Um, I'm the Morgan end, yeah. Hazelwood, pretty much everywhere on social media. I blog writing tips and writerly musings over on Morgan Hazelwood, and you can find it in video format on YouTube at Morgan Hazelwood. Um, except Twitter, where I'm Morgan Hazelwood without the A and the E because somebody's been sitting on that handle for 10 years without using it. Um, annoyed. Uh, I, I had one final tip to add in is when you are getting beta read feedback, do not just hit accept all and consider it done. You still need to smooth it out and do a reread. So one final thought. Yes, very true. Um, so my name is Keith Hughes. Um, 
this is my latest book, Time Hunt, Stolen Time. This is a time travel series that I, uh, I consider, uh, I describe as being the fugitive meets back to the future uh, with lovely uh, covers by Starla. Uh, you can find information on this, uh, these books, as well as my podcast, which is called Ramblings of an Indisciplined Mind at penslinger.com. I'm also on Facebook under my own name. And I am on um, uh, uh, Twitter as uh, Ed Gizmo, just how it sounds. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for participating, thanking my panelists, and thank you to the audience for listening to us and giving us some great questions. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. <laughs>